Hi everyone, welcome to the Heather Makes a Mess in Power Automate video. Today I'm going to show you how to use Power Automate to create an opt-in, opt-out list that works with Microsoft Forms and SharePoint lists. The first time I set up this flow, it did not work out as I intended, so I'm going to start by showing you the working flow point out some of the errors that I made along the way, and then show you the broken flow at the very end of the video. That way you can avoid making the same mistakes that I made. I have navigated to Power Automate. In the left-hand navigation menu, I will click on Create. The opt-in, opt-out flow I want will be an automated cloud flow based on responses received to a Microsoft form. First, I need to give the form a name, so I'm just going to call it training opt-in. The trigger we need is when a new response is submitted to a Microsoft form. Then click on Create. The trigger is asking for a form ID. If you click the drop-down, the choices you see are personal forms. If you want to use a group form, as I do in this example, you will need to get the design ID, formerly known as form ID, from the URL of the group form. If you don't know how to get the ID, I have linked a short video in the description that will show you how to find it. First, you must click enter custom value and then paste in the ID number. If you don't, you will see an error here. Click on new step and choose forms get response details. This will pull in the answers from the form so that we can use them in the rest of the flow. We're going to add the exact same form ID into this step by clicking enter custom value and pasting it in. Then we will get the response ID from the dynamic content. The next step is to search for the SharePoint action get items because I want to make Power Automate search the list to make sure the name is not already on it. Get items will pull the information into an array. Then you must specify a site address and a list name that's associated with that site address. Technically, this is all the information Power Automate needs, but we're going to add an optional step and use a filter query. The query will be written as title is equal to expressed as EQ, type an apostrophe, and then use responder's email from dynamic content. After that, use another apostrophe. Now the flow will only pull back one item rather than all the items on the list. As a note, the title is the name of the column I want to filter by. The first column of any list is always called title in Power Automate, even if you rename it on the list. Now we will add the next step, and this is going to be a condition control to make sure that each email is only on the list one time. In the Choose a Value field, you will need to use an expression instead of dynamic content. I am not the best at writing expressions, so the one used in this flow was found on a Microsoft support forum. We're going to tell Power Automate to take the results of the get items query and check if the item was on the list. If it was on the list, the query would have a value of one. If the item was not on the list, the query would have a value of zero. So what we're looking for is if the value is equal to zero, add a new item to the list. To do that, I am going to add an action on the if yes side of the condition control. This is going to be a SharePoint action and I will search through the list to find create item. From here, I just need to specify the site address and the list name that we have been using for this flow. Power Automate requires something in the title field. In this example, it will be the responder's email from the form. Scroll through the dynamic content until you find the get response details section and then select responder's email. And that is all we need for the if yes side. If the condition control is false, then on the if no path, we will do nothing. As always, I suggest that you test your flow. My first attempt at this resulted in several failed tests. After more research, I was able to correct my flawed logic and successfully add the emails to the list. The project that I was working on also needed an opt-out step. Now the flow for the opt-out is very similar to the opt-in. It starts when a new response is submitted to a form. 
Power Automate will only look for one form per flow, and I was required to have a separate opt-out form. So what we have for this flow is when a new response is submitted to the opt-out form, get the response details, and still get the items from SharePoint. This time, if the value of the expression is equal to one, meaning that you found the item on the SharePoint list, we want to delete that item. I will click on add an action on the if yes side of the flow, and then search for the SharePoint action delete item. And just like we did in the prior flow, we're going to select this site address associated with my Power Automate demos, and we're still using the training notifications list. However, the delete items action requires you to get an ID so it knows which item to delete. It is going to automatically insert and apply to each loop. However, if the column that you're using for the filter query in the get item step has a unique value, the apply to each loop is not going to be a problem. So as always, I do recommend that you test the flow. And in this case, we're going to start by looking at the SharePoint list. You see that my email address is on the list. Now I am at the opt out form and it only has one question. So I'll click I acknowledge and submit. Navigating back to Power Automate, you see that the condition control was true, so it went through the apply to each loop and removed my name from the SharePoint list. So I'm going to refresh and you see that it has been removed. Now let's look at my broken flow so you can learn from my mistakes. The when a new response is submitted and get response detail steps were fine. The problem started in the get item step. This action gathers up all the information on the list and puts it into an array. Basically, the flow is returning multiple items for the flow to look at, so it wants to loop through all of them. I did not use the filter query to ask for only one item. When I added the condition control, I used dynamic content to see if the title field contained the responder's email address. Mistake number two. As soon as I used the dynamic content for title, the apply to each loop was automatically added. Since I did not know the expression I showed you earlier even existed, I was looking for the list to find an existing item. If yes, update that item so it was not added twice. If no, create a new item. When I tested it, I looked at the list and I said, yay, the item was added only once. I submitted a second test to prove that my name was not added a second time when I submitted the form again. When looking at the flow history, they all said failed. How could that possibly be? On the original list, the email column had require items to be unique turned on. So even though Power Automate was looping through the list, it was rejecting any subsequent entries. If require unique entries was turned off, I would have immediately seen that the flow was looping. So there you go. Now you know how to properly build and manage an opt-in, opt-out list using Power Automate. We also talked about some mistakes that I made along the way, and now you know how to avoid them. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking this video. It really helps my channel out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.